All right, guys, welcome back to the Frugal Homestead. So today I wanted to share with you how I'm setting up to share my internet with all three properties. Now this could be very helpful for some of you to save some money. In a normal world, people would probably get internet hooked up at all three sites, which would cost you three times as much. I'm gonna show you some older tech that can be purchased extremely cheap and get all the internet shared even through hardscapes like ours. All right guys, so I want you to understand that that's the main house. That's the apartment we're gonna Airbnb, which we're also gonna Airbnb the house later. And then that is our tiny house. Do you notice anything? They're all made of metal, which makes the Wi-Fi mesh systems almost obsolete. This actually used to be a three season room, so it literally is metal, foam, metal and then i had another layer of siding on it and now it's got vinyl siding too so getting a signal in there through wi-fi is a pain that is completely metal and you saw how heavily insulated it so it has a problem getting wi-fi signal through it and that's just a big metal box so because of that normally you'd probably have to get internet at each different site or you'd have to try and run some cabling and for most part if you're using like cat 5 cat 6 even if you buy the good shielded stuff it's going to wear out pretty quick so i bought some older tech that can do the job that i think a lot of people don't even know about them so let's go inside the garage so i can show you the base of the setup now mind you you're going to see a wiring nightmare throughout this because everything's under construction i just set it up so i could show you guys what we're working with all right guys so now we're in the garage and what I want to show you is to start off, here's our router. Now this is from Spectrum. I do play games with them where I go back and forth between using Visible Wireless and them to get the best price. But they just gave me this 100 service for $29 a month for two years. So it's really hard to beat that. So from that, it comes out and goes into this, which is a Mocha adapter. Now, if you guys don't know what a Mocha adapter is, basically, internet goes in, power goes in, signal comes out and travels through coax cable, just regular old cable wire. So if you wanted to put internet in different parts of your house and you've already got your house wired for coax, this is an amazing solution. Now, that is a power line adapter. Basically, the internet goes in, and then it goes through your electric box, which this is hooked to the main house over there. So it runs internet on a different frequency inside your power wires. Now it does have distance and it does have more losses than the Mocha adapter, but power line's pretty easy and that stuff can be bought super cheap. I got a three pack of those for next to nothing. Now I will put links in description to all this gear so you can go check it out, check out the pricing and see if it's an option for you. But I do want to say that make sure you're buying stuff that is the newest generation because there's some of these that are like Mocha 1 and Mocha 2. This is Mocha 2.5 and the same thing with power line adapters, those ones there do not have Wi-Fi built in. Some of them do. And it's actually better to get the Wi-Fi based ones. But with that said, let me show you how we have this all distributed out. Now you are going to notice all of our routers are named the exact same thing. Because by doing that, anywhere I go, my phone just hooks super easy. It already knows it. So if you're in your own house, you could do the same thing. But we will go inside to the main house over there and show you how this power line adapter and one on the other end in the house sends internet from here inside there. All right, once again, excuse the mess of the wiring guys. I had to turn off the grid ties because they are loud. And I wanted to use an outlet that was as close to the actual box behind this door as possible. Now, when your power line adapter is functioning correctly, you will have those lights lit up. I don't know if you guys can see those, but if it's lit up red, that means you're not getting a very good signal. If it's lit up good, like all green, then you are. 
Now I just have it hooked to this router here. This is the same router I'm using this and the apartment. Now let's go in and I will show you. We are hooked to the 5G one. Now if I hook to the 2.4G guest, it won't do as good. So we are hooked to it. And then we're going to close that. Now I have the 110 is what I'm supposed to have. So hopefully I can get this so you guys can see it here. All right, pushing over 50. Almost to 60. Not too bad considering it's going through two power boxes and a bunch of wire. Now you'll notice my upload speeds come through at full tilt. There is no loss. Don't ask me why. I don't know the science behind it, but that's actually a big deal to me with uploading videos. So 60.5 and 11.5. That's pretty good in my opinion for just having to plug in two of these, which they have outlets on these ones in the front to plug your router into. So you don't even lose the outlet. And you just run a piece of wire now like i said some of these come with wi-fi built in if i was going to go do it again i'd probably buy those just for the simplicity of it but you can set them to be the same as the rest of your house so they're almost like a repeater except they don't have the losses of a repeater now let's go out and check out the apartment all right guys so now we're out in the wiring mess that is the apartment now I don't know if it's going to pick up on camera, especially because of light. Let me turn the light off. But that metal light is ever so slightly orange. And what I want to say about that is that means there's losses in the line. Now you can see this wiring mess. When I actually hard install it, it will be just off that main panel right there. So it means it's going to have the shortest run back to the other side as possible. Now we've got our router here just for making sure we're standard here we are on the house which is the 5g all right and then we're gonna go speed test and let's see what we get very nice pushing 80. very nice so a solid showing and we are getting all our upload speed as we were before. Now these are really decent options when wanting to send internet. Obviously the shorter the wire, the better, you know, the less things it has to go through. And if you're using these and they don't work good in one outlet, it does help to try and move them to another one to see which one gets the best service. But the absolute truth is I saved the best for last because I love me some Mocha adapter. It is a little bit more of a pain because running it down a tiny house, I will have to bury a wire. But because I make my own coax wires, I made this one and it didn't cost me nearly anything because I just popped the ends on it. I've got so much experience with that doing TV antennas and stuff around my property and for friends and family. It's nothing for me to pop one of these together and just wait till you see what we have at the other end that I got that was a steal because Mocha has some excellent opportunities in the used market. So as we're walking down here, I do want to show you, I still have a line I've got to bury. That's just regular coax. I probably, probably could have gone overhead with it, but I'm just going to go ahead and put it in the ground. All right, so this place is a giant mess, but as you can see, we have an Action Tech Mocha router. Now, when I saw this, because I was just looking at the adapters, I couldn't believe that this had a starting bid of like 10 or $15, I think it was. I don't know. I don't think I paid over $25 for this. And it's a Mocha adapter and a router all in one. Now it is type in, so it is an older technology, but I mean, I only have the 100 service, so it probably doesn't really matter, to be honest. Now, 
the one thing I want to say about this is this and the other adapter are going to cost more than power line adapters because Mocha adapters are actually quite a bit more powerful and have better quality. But if you go these, because you could buy two of these and do the same thing, you might actually get them cheaper. But with that said, I am actually loving Mocha adapters and I will show you why. All right, so now we are connected to house one. And let's go do a speed test and see what we're getting on the Mocha. All right, so we're pushing 90s. Now you can see why I like Mocha. Honestly, it's just so much more power coming through the line. Not that power line adapters are bad because that was more than enough on most people's systems. But look at that, 95, and I've got 100 service. And I almost never fully get 100. But with 11.7 upload, that's my big kicker. I didn't want to lose any of my upload speed because I'm down here going to be doing YouTube videos and uploading them. Now, if you don't think Mocha's impressive, then I don't think you understand the concept here because if you had this say you're running you know ethernet cat 5 cat 6 whatever and you're trying to run it from up there on the back side of that building all the way down and in here a either that line's going to get tore up or b you're going to have massive losses and i can tell you you will not be getting that kind of speed here now on the power line adapters you lose some in the 2g range and i or 2.4 range and i'm not sure why that is um but just for fun let's see if it'll okay it's connecting so that is the 5g we just did now we're going to do the 2.4g so let's switch on to here. It's finding provider. Boom. All right. Look at that. Get 91, 92. Look at the ping, guys. 19. I mean, that's that's a pretty quality signal. That's not terrible not for the distance we're running and we're getting 11 or 12 on the upload that's pretty good so clearly I think you can see why we chose this method the mesh systems just won't work now I will be adding a switch in the garage there because I have an old Super G router and antennas that connect to it for exterior use and I'm gonna shoot internet down over the hill because in that valley you almost cannot get any cellular service so to have that down there is going to be helpful for when we're cutting firewood or if we're down there milling wood or even you know hunting seasons or if our friends want to go down there and backpacker camp if you're ever to have an emergency it's nice to have it it won't be super fast but it'll be plenty to do whatever you would have to do while out there in the woods so like i said before i'll be leaving links in the description box below to all these products at various different places you can check the used market but my biggest thing i can tell you is if you use these buy the newest technology you can afford some of these only have throughputs that are very low so and don't always trust what the box says go do your research first but i think that considering I think both these adapters cost me about 50 bucks used and one of them is a router two all in one I just sent my internet all the way down here if I'd had to buy three I would probably have a 90 to 100 internet bill for these three properties 
but now I have them all on one. If I have to step up the internet speed a little bit in the future to handle the properties, I will. But my point is, I just saved a bunch of money and it was maybe a month's worth of cost to do it. So something to consider. If you have dead spots in your house, this might work. You got old coax run through your house. Mocha adapters are great ways. They do play well with um, cable. They do not play well with satellite. So just know that. But the cabling is all the same. So if you have old cabling from satellite, use it. Get internet at higher speeds in your office or whatever, just by simply putting power line or mocha adapters in. They both have their place. And with that said, I gotta get going because I gotta bury this line and clean up this mess, and I will see you guys in the next one.